I joined the Bureau in 1970, and I joined the Bureau for one purpose. I wanted to do counterintelligence. Um, that was my objective. Now, many FBI agents didn't do that. They, they joined wanting to be, in essence, federal cops. They wanted to do bank robberies and those kinds of investigations. I did not. Uh, my experience during the Vietnam War, as I said, I never wanted to live through that terrible experience again when we didn't understand our, our enemy and we ended up winning the war on the battlefield but losing the war, in essence, when America had to leave. And in 1970, that was still raging. The Americas, we had demonstrations going on in the streets. And I was concerned about what had happened. I was a young captain who had commanded a, um, a companies within the United States Army. And I was motivated to try to do something with the one life that I had, and it was to understand this. So when I joined the Bureau, I learned how to be an FBI agent. But I had very little training on the threat. It was in 1973 that the FBI decided that if you're going to work against an enemy, you ought to have a understanding of who that enemy is, what they think, why they do what they do. And I remember going to the very first counterintelligence training course, BCI we called it, Basic Counterintelligence. It was six weeks long. Um, John McCaffrey was one of the principal instructors, and I'll never forget that. We went down there for six weeks. I was in the very first class. And uh, the, he started talking about Russia is huge, Russia is big, Russia has 11 time zones. And he started the course with an understanding of what is the threat coming to America, the espionage threat, the nuclear threat we were facing, the Cold War we were in the middle of, where does it come from? And he started at the root cause. He started. Where did the Soviet Union come from? Where, who were the Tsarists? Who was the Okhrana? What was the KGB? What was the Cheka? How did it operate? What was the GRU? What are their examples of what they've done? What is the ideology that they use? How do they recruit people? And it was a fascinating course to understand not only the tactics used to fight against what was then an enemy, uh, but you had to understand the enemy. Um, and it really made me begin to exercise myself and read about the enemy and read about their doctrine and read about the cases. I will tell you one of the most significant books I ever read was a book by uh, Ole Penkovsky, uh, a man who turns out to have been a volunteer in Moscow to the United States, a colonel in the GRU, Soviet military intelligence, and he was trying to warn America that there was this huge threat that was coming from the Soviet Union and it came from their nuclear capability. And this brave man tried to volunteer to the United States in 1960, he was finally met in 1961, and uh, he eventually was caught within a year. By 1962, was caught and executed, and he wrote a thing called the Penkovsky Papers. Eventually, that was followed up by other books. But I read that book. That was partly written by the CIA to, as an education for America as the threat that was coming from the Soviet Union. But that had a huge impact on the young Dave Major because I remember reading about it and I said any man that would take the risk he did must be doing it and must be one of those few people who are trying to change history. And so it was one of my drivers in trying to understand that. As a brand new puppy FBI agent in New York, in Washington, D.C., before I ever came, went out to the field and was working in Newark and New York, I would walk by the Russian embassy every day. I was living off of um, the Scott Circle. I walked by and I looked in and I was thinking, what are they doing today to undermine my nation? And at the same time, Oleg Kalugin is on the inside uh, conspiring to run operations against America. Uh, little did I know that Oleg Kalugin would then come and work uh, with us here at the CI Center. History has an interesting twist, but he was working to undermine America at that time, and I was learning how to protect America from the same ideology. One of the most significant courses I ever took was a course that the Air Force put on, and it was a course on Soviet military doctrine, threat doctrine. What do the Russians do? Why do they do it? And that particular course had a huge impact on me also because they started the same way the six-week course did, and they went back to the Tsarist times, and they walked us through, and they say, in this context, what is Soviet military threat doctrine? What do they want to do? How are they going to do it? Uh, what are their forces that they have? What is the correlation of forces to operate? And then what is the role of espionage in this potential military conflict? And I was so impressed by that week-long course that was taught in Bowling Air Force Base by the Air Force 
that I said that I wanted to create a center that would have the same level of professionalism to talk about new threats that we faced. And that really was one of the things that drove me to create this center of excellence that we call the CI Center. The other thing that drove me to do that is that when I was uh, assigned to the White House as the first director of counterintelligence and intelligence programs on the National Security Council, not as a liaison officer, but as an actual National Security Council staff officer, uh, detailed away from the FBI, and it was my job to put counterintelligence and the threat of intelligence on the policy table. The first time I went in to meet the President of the United States, that was Ronald Reagan at that time, uh, he told me something, and he said that, you know, don't you, you know, that there really is a threat coming from the communists and from the Soviets, and I was an informant for the FBI. Well, I immediately looked at the President of the United States, shook his hand and said, but of course, Mr. President, I know that. Everybody in the FBI knows and the fact that you were proud of the fact that you had helped us fight this threat. Well, I lied directly to the President of the United States because I had never learned that. I did not know the role that the future President of the United States had had in the 1940s, standing up against threat when he had been recruited by the FBI, when he was the President of the Actors Guild, the Actors Guild in Hollywood, and was threatened himself with acid being thrown in his face. So he had been belly to belly with the threat. He understood the threat. And when I, he became the President of the United States, um, he saw the world not with rose-colored glasses. He saw the way the world was. And he and his policies at that time dealt with the threat directly and, and honestly and uh, was not cowered by them. And it turned out that it turns out to be a, a well-read and very engaged man. There's an awful lot of myth about Ronald Reagan, but I know from my personal experience that when we would get documents that talked about threat documents or threat or Soviet threat doctrine, we would send it to the president. I remember if I would send it up to him and I would have a meeting the next day or the next week afterwards, he would say, and usually wink, he says, you know, that was a long paper you gave me. It took me up all night to read it, and he did read it. He never fell asleep at meetings. You sat down and talked to him, and he got it. He understood it. He understood the evil that had been coming out of the Soviet Union at the time, and he basically said there's a wolf at the door. You have to understand that there are threats, and you have to respond to them, and you cannot wish them away. Uh, that probably led to eventually a movie being made there about that same thing. But Ronald Reagan understood this issue. And for me, uh, as an FBI uh, supervisory special agent at that time on the National Security Council, he was one of my allies. He also, that experience, was another driver that said we had to have a center of excellence to study counterintelligence and counterterrorism and the role of intelligence and that America could not afford not to have professional training in this area. And so that really also drove me to create this center as a center of excellence. And I, I really hope you have an opportunity to come in and spend some quality time at the center to study these issues so that you also can understand the world not the way you'd like it to be, but the way the world is. We pride ourselves in one very important thing at the CI Center, and that is to always look at things from a factual standpoint. Look at the way the world is. Uh, we certainly never get involved with politics or we don't, we're not here as a cause. We don't try to be a cause for anything other than defending the West and defending the United States and to keeping this great country free and independent and an opportunity for people to be, enjoy the great dream which is America. This great experiment that Ronald Reagan told me about that exists in this country that I personally experienced with my own family is that I want to pass on as a legacy to my children and to my grandchildren and their children. And uh, those of us who have an opportunity to make a difference with the one life that we're going to be given, and this is not preseason, we only have one life, is to understand the threats and where they come from. I learned that when I began to learn about Soviet threat doctrine and created my entire professional life trying to respond to that and push back against that, and that's what we're dedicated to at the CI Center.